Golden Age Athens was where some of the most influential philosophical thinkers of all time rubbed shoulders. Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. We're told that Athens intelligentsia would often bump into each other here in the Agora, the hub of the city, while taking a morning stroll. While debate might be sparked here in the public spaces of the city, we're told that more hardcore philosophical discussion took place in a rather more Dionysiac environment, in a private soiree known as the Symposium. Symposia were intellectual gatherings, but they were in no way dry. Even in Plato's lofty meeting of minds, it was Dionysus's gift of wine that helped men think outside the box. Plato's Symposium, one of the great works of Western literature, and as its title suggests, it's all about the symposium, a drinking together. And it's one of our very few insights into what it was actually like to participate in a real live, men only, adult male citizen only drinking party. I mean, it's interesting how structured these were. They weren't free for alls, were Not they? Not at all free for alls. We think of a party a drinking party and let it all hang out, but actually they had rules. They elected a leader, somebody who would decide how many and how much each of the wine cups would fill, whether it was to be this mixture of water and wine, also how many guests there should be sitting where, rather not sitting, but reclining on couches. And one should say that right to begin with, after the man who's going to be the symposi arc, sometimes called the king, after he's decided the rules, then they pour a libation. Who do they pour it to? The god of wine, either Dionysus or Bacchus. Then they sing a hymn, and uh, this is before they're well lubricated. So yes, very structured indeed. Because I suppose what these things do is they do allow us to do something absolutely essential to humans, to exchange ideas, to, yes. to let our minds run freely. The sum bit means with, the posion bit posium in Latin means drinking. So it's the communality of it, the joining together, the exchange of ideas of both thoughts and passions. It's a very striking fact that the Greeks somehow thought you could both think and drink at the same time. Of course, for sensible thought to flourish, drinking had to be tempered. The Greeks watered down their wine, acknowledging the dangers of excess. For them, the gifts of Dionysus were considered a burden for mankind as well as a joy. 